It's a crisp, refreshing feeling. Crisp, clear and light. America's drinking seven up, and it sure feels right. Feeling lucky seven. Kevin, stop singing, seven. man. Seven. Huh? What's a singing guy? I'm standing right next to you, and you're f***ing singing. Cut it out. Travel back in time to the 80s, reliving the music. You can't have the Pretender's first album. That's mine. I bought it. You did not. The catchphrases. Did you have a brain tumor for breakfast? And the wannabes. Sometimes I see you dance around the house in my underwear. Doesn't make me Madonna. Never will. Because just like you, we're stuck in the 80s. Can you say stuck in the 80s? Welcome to Stuck in the 80s. It's your host, Steve Spears. And Brad in LA. And today we honor TV commercials from the 80s that have become true earworms. He put creatures in our bodies to control our minds. Made us say lies, do things. Stuck in the 80s is supported by the 80s Cruise. Join me and Spearsy on the Royal Caribbean Mariner of the Seas in March 2022 for an amazing trip back in time. Headliners for the cruise that week include the Human League, ABC, 38 Special, Berlin, Morris Day in the Time, Belinda Carlisle, Dire Straits Legacy, Modern English, John Parr, and many more. Use the promo code STUCK when booking to go back to summer camp with us and get $200 cabin credit. Go to www.the80scruise.com for more details. Would either of you like another cup of coffee? I will, but Jim won't. I think I will have another cup of coffee. Jim never has a second cup of coffee at home. Hey, everyone. It's us. (laughs) Did you miss us? How much green tea has Steve had today? Oh, no. Oh, no. Can I get you anything, Mr. Trainer? Coffee? Tea? Me? <laughs> Isn't she right? Not, not as much as I should have. Let's put it that way. Um, you, know, you know what I noticed when you're reading that promo for the 80s cruise is, you know, that, that last episode where, we, where I went kind of overboard with the whole Berlin? Belinda thing. You'd think that yeah. somebody would have either written in to just kind of chide us for being... Our foolishness. Jerk holes. But I'm just going to guess that probably nobody listened. So, you know, just download it. I don't care if you listen. Just download it. Yeah, exactly. Anyway, so we had this idea this week. And we thought it'd be fun. (laughs) Like, we think a lot of things will be fun when we dream of them at three in the morning and send emails to each other. Some of them less so. Some of them are Berlin. Some of them are (laughs) Belinda. (laughs) <laughs> so I don't know why I'm going back to that. But the idea was we, we did a show, you know, about a year or so ago about marketing campaigns of the 80s. There was four or five of us for that show. Four yeah, of us, there I were want to say. Cast of thousands. And we all picked like a really monumental ad campaign of the oh, 80s. Yeah. I mean, like, you know, it's funny because when you started, I'm like, I don't know what you're talking about. But then I remembered that Gail saying, this is your brain on drugs. Right. So I was thinking about it this week, and I was playing old commercials from the 80s on YouTube during the workday, as as I tend to do. And I kind of realized that what I miss so much about commercials from the 80s is that they still had really good jingles. Yeah. These days, fortunately or unfortunately, thanks to YouTube and stuff like that, where you can skip a com- uh, commercial after five or ten seconds – there's no there's no time for like a real great storyline or a nice song to be sung out or you know any sort of American poetry to take place. Uh, yeah, they, they got to get the message in fast. You know, when do you actually <laughs> see commercials? The only time I see commercials is when I'm watching soccer on the weekends. Because right, and even then it's just a halftime, which is brilliant. I don't even have live TV anymore. I can't watch commercials. The only <gasps> time I see commercials are <clears throat> when it's when I'm watching streaming when I'm watching YouTube. You haven't seen the uh, the Geico commercial with uh, tag team helping prepare dessert. Scoops, there it is. <laughs> Scoops, there it is. Oh, it's hilarious. I know it's not eighties. Sorry, folks. I know that's early nineties, but that commercial, the first time I saw it, I died laughing. Uh, French vanilla, rocky road, chocolate, peanut butter, cookie dough. Scoop, there it is. Scoop, there it is. 
I saw it because I have live TV during football season, American football season. Got it. Just to ruin your story. Oh, that's okay. Crumple it up. I'll just edit that part out. So for this week's show, and I hope this will become a series, but we'll see. We're going to honor five commercials that were some of the ultimate earworms of the 80s. And if, if you're wondering what is an earworm, you're listening to the wrong show. First, <laughs> we need you to go watch Wrath of Khan. Yes. And now imagine that creature in your brain, instead of telling you what to do, just sings the same song over and over again until you want to drive a screwdriver into your ear. Yes, exactly. So, and as we all know from the history of Stuck in the 80s, the only way to cure the earworm is to hum the theme to uh, the A-Team. Use it when you need to during this week's show. I usually use Led Zeppelin, but that would work too. It comes down to making out whenever possible. Put on side one of Led Zeppelin 4. Anyway, try that too. I'm going to hear that in my nightmares tonight. When I wake up cold and sweaty, um, it won't be from the, the gin or the bourbon. It'll be from Brad and his da na na da na na You want me to record you a little a little recording of that? You could use it on yeah. your phone. For the one time every six months that you actually call me, we can well, yeah, it'll, your, it'll do Your that. tone when you send me a text is uh, the pitfall uh, swinging on the vine sound. Da-na-na-na. Is it really? Da-na-na-na. Yep. Wow. I'm kind of honored. I really like, I'm smiling, which Excellent. most people know I don't do very often. Anyway. Meanwhile, enough back the, at the ranch. <laughs> enough enough with the self-deprecation. Let's get going. Here's the first earworm of the 80s ad world. I drink Dr. Pepper, don't you know? And the taste is making peppers everywhere I go. I'm a pepper, he's a pepper, we're a pepper. Oh, uh, what's a pepper? Wouldn't you like to be a pepper, too? The taste is going to knock you out. The more you drink, the more you shout. Ah, uh, be a pepper. <laughs> I, suddenly, I, I feel like cavorting in the streets with a white button-down shirt and a snappy black vest. Yes, of course you do, because you're American. <laughs> this is a fun campaign. Like I, I don't think I even drank Dr. Pepper. I think this was one of those campaigns that actually worked. Hmm. I don't, I'm pretty sure that probably circa 19, you know, late 70s, early 80s, I was probably just drinking regular old... Actually, I can tell you exactly what I was drinking. I was dr- drinking Win Dixie Grocery Store generic brand Cola. strawberry soda. Ugh. Oh no, strawberry soda! Blah. I know, but pretty bad. Anyway, here's the story. Most people might know that Dr. Pepper actually dates back prior to the invention of Coca Cola. It goes to 1885, and it was actually first marketed as like a uh, cure for uh, indigestion. Um, yeah. it, was, it promised to restore vim, vigor, and vitality. And mm. anytime you have three V's in a row, that's not that's never a good thing. That's kind of a lot of sodas came from that background, though, didn't they? Like of the time, like yes, kind of did. patent medicine-y. Right. Can't we just drink it because it tastes good? No. Uh, yeah. No, it's good for you. <laughs> okay. So Be a Pepper starts in 1977 and goes all the way to 1983. Have you ever seen the shirts that say Be a Pepper on them? Oh, sure. I, I owned one, and I, I was so proud of it. If I still had it, I would have it stuffed into a pillow, and I would I would snuggle with it at night. <laughs> I wonder if I could still get one of those. That would be great, actually. Um, but through through the course of the campaign, a lot of people saying the, you know, be a pepper, drink Dr. Pepper, because it's burned into our brains now. Because it's Michael catchy Jackson, as hell. Michael Jackson, Statler Brothers, Little River Band, mm. Ray Bolger, oh. a.k.a. the Scarecrow. Oh, so good. So but, good. But the um, the mythical character that Brad's referring to is, of course, David Naughton, the actor. The actor? <laughs> and he would become kind of the face of Dr. Pepper for, for several years until – and this is what blows my mind – until he appears nude in American Werewolf in London, at which case he gets fired. Point of order. He was wearing <laughs> balloons. He was not naked. 
He was wearing balloons. <laughs> Not when he was in. Oh, that's right. He, he was wearing balloons. Well, I guess at Which one point. Which he stole. He, yes. Shameless. Crime. Same. Shameless. <laughs> shameless balloon thief. Flea <laughs> Zoo. Film at 11. Come 1983. For whatever reason, I, I don't know what kind of brain damage the execs at Dr. Pepper what had. What exec came up with that? No, just to to, to undo it. Like, to yeah, do something. I can't believe they walked away from it. Uh, and they changed it to Dr. Pepper made a pepper out of me. <laughs> okay, there's a trivia question that would get us murdered. Yes. They wouldn't even wait until trivia was over. They'd just all rise up. Somehow they'd have pitchforks and torches under their chairs and they'd yeah. kill us right there on the it'd stage. Just be, it'd just be this really bad... Like D level slasher movie scene, you know. Yeah. Oh, by the way, another bit of trivia that would probably get us killed. And uh, the 1986 movie Short Circuit, one of the lines that uh, uh, Johnny Five says is, Would you like to be a Pepper 2? Wouldn't you like to be a Pepper 2? What is going on? I, I don't know. Uh, that I would never have remembered. That's amazing. I still love Dr. Pepper, but uh, I'm trying to go on this. No soda thing, yeah, for the rest of my life, <laughs> or <laughs> at least for a, a, a couple months, and see if I can't break the hold that it has on me. And I just drink, I drink a lot of Diet Coke. Yeah, I'm in New York right now <laughs> with the future wife, and one of the promises I made to myself was no, no soda while I'm in New York. So nice. we'll see. Yeah, I, I quit drinking soda too. I do like Dr Pepper, but I can't remember the last time I had one. I think the only time I really drink soda anymore is on the cruise when I switch my drink preference to uh, bourbon and ginger. I don't get ginger as a mixer, but I don't judge you. you. Why are you judging me? <laughs> let's judge this next commercial. Why don't okay, we? Okay, let's do it. I'm going to drop this bomb on you. Here we go. No little cinnamon gum freshens breath longer than Big Red. So kiss a little longer, laugh a little longer, stay close a little longer, longer with Big Red. Big red gum, Steve, if you're going to chew gum, chew cinnamon gum. That's where it's at. No. I, I Can I say it right now? I just want to get this over with because if I forget to say this during the show, I'm going to be really angry. I okay. hate cinnamon gum. <gasps> really? It, oh, feels like see, it, it, it feels like my tongue is swelling up in my mouth. Cinnamon? I'm allergic to cinnamon. Two things. A, I don't really chew gum because it makes me hungry. Like, a chew gum, you're chewing it. And like, 20 minutes later, your stomach's like, where's the food, dude? You've been chewing for 20 minutes. <laughs> Got to send something down here. But if I'm chewing gum, I would prefer something cinnamon. Yeah. I want spearmint. Okay. That Thus makes sense. <laughs> Steve Spearsmint. I didn't even think of it that way. Big Red was introduced in the mid-'70s. We're not going back that far on purpose. It just kind of happened. You know, like Juicy Fruit, which is okay, I guess. It's just the flavor disappears so fast. Yeah. But Big Red has its own jingle, which we just heard, and it was used from 77 until 1998. So wow. for a long time. That's fitting. It's fitting, the words to the jingle. It makes it all make sense. The marketing strategy they came up with was to promote the concept of long-lasting fresh breath. Oh, so that's the little longer comes right. from that. Yeah. Okay. Be- that makes kind sense. of trying to play on the on the you know dentine, the big competition in the cinnamon gum space. That's a teeny little stick of gum. You know how much flavor can you get that teeny little stick of gum? You're doing all the marketing work for them right now. I know. I know. Can you even get big red gum anymore? I don't know. I don't I, buy gum. I think so. I think so. It's it's referenced in the movie Talladega Nights. I'm Ricky Bobby. If you don't chew big red, then f- you. The only kind of gum I get now are the kind of comes in the little. Shaky, like the little bottle. Oh, mm-hmm. the yeah, little yeah, chiclet. Yeah. That's kinda. all I want. Just give me that. Come. And and now that I, I work from home, there's not. I don't have that manic need to like eat 15 pieces of gum a day before I head into a meeting. So mm. I wonder if the gum market is kind of suffering during the the lockdown. That's a good question. That, I I kind of the same. I always had a tin of mints on my desk, and I would just eat them out of habit, like little Altoid yeah. minis. But that was the only reason. And not you so just much don't anymore. Have them hanging around the house. <laughs> I 
Uh, oh man. Well, yeah. No, I just, I just can't get, I can't get down with the cinnamon gum. I just, I remember Big Red in particular, and it was real popular. I mean, it was, it was the cool. Oh yeah. It was the cool gum to eat, and and you know, in the eighties. <laughs> but it was just. I will say one one thing that my my older sister will have maybe a less fond memory of Big Red Gum. I went to visit her one time when I was either just out of college or still in college, and so it was one of those bring your laundry trips. So I brought my dirty laundry up and I did my laundry and I was like the last load was in the dryer and I was going to go as soon as it finished drying and I opened up the dryer and I'm like oh um hey looks like I left an entire jumbo pack of big red gum in my wash and it's plastered (laughs) all over the inside of your dryer okay gotta go you left you didn't clean it (laughs) so I left (laughs) yeah it was like a six hour drive home man I've I've had to do that that cleaning the inside of the dryer from gum and something like that Uh, that's the worst man it probably would have been easier to just, you know, like burn the house down and start over yeah. than to actually scrape it. But I all bet it smelled. Out. I bet the dryer and all the clothes smelled wonderful. It smelled amazing. <laughs> mm. If they had cinnamon flavored uh, fabric softeners, I think I could get behind <laughs> dryer sheets. <laughs> oh, Ding! That was the week. Brad Williams finally <laughs> scored with a chick. Uh, Your clothes smell so good. Podcast over, we finally found our revenue source. <laughs> Oh God! Okay, oh, please. so those are catchy, but I think the next one might be the catchiest one so far. Here we go. I don't wanna grow up. I'm a toys rock kid. They got a million toys and toys are out that I can play with. I don't wanna grow up. I'm a toys rock kid. They got the best for so much less. You really flip your lid from bike to train to video game. It's the biggest toy store there is. Gee whiz! Who doesn't know every single word of this jingle? Who doesn't? It really flips my lid. Toys R Us was founded way back in 1957, if you want to consider the idea that Charles Lazarus, that's when he started adding toys to um, a furniture store that he ran. Oh, interesting. Over time, it would finally become the behemoth that would become Toys R Us. I guess at its peak, it had about 800 stores in the U.S. and 800 stores outside the U.S., but then... Business models did not adapt. I don't know what the current status is. It seems to change weekly. Like, it'll go out of business, and then somebody will buy the name, and then it goes out of business, and then somebody buys the name. So, you know, check the big tote board on Wall Street for the current status um the story here though is kind of interesting the jingle was written by linda kaplan thaler which you cannot okay. say with a mouth of uh big red gum green tea diet coke or yeah. big red gum it, it was the early 80s she was a junior copywriter at the j walter thompson ad agency and it was her job to come up with a, a catchy tune for this toy company and so with the help of a guy named James Patterson, future crime novelist, <clears throat> they come up with the catch line, you know, I'm a Toys R Us kid. It kind of goes fr- from there and it works. In a later interview, she said, I don't know if it was good enough, but her boss said, keep working on it because he couldn't stop singing it. Well, damn straight. <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah. I mean, it just taps into so many things. Yeah. You know. And if you kind of wonder, if you're listening to this podcast, you have some fondness for the past, some some sense of nostalgia, and some of that is pointed back at your childhood. So it's pretty clever. I don't think I've really bought anything at Toys R Us. I may have bought like action figures there in the 80s. That would be about it. Yeah, I don't think I shopped there in the 80s. I shopped there when I had little kids. Right. I think this is one of those stores that we were a little too old for. To to I mean, like it, it didn't become popular until after we were out of our toy phase. Yeah, mainly I remember like footage at the local Toys R Us in Oklahoma City when they're all out of Cabbage Patch dolls and the parents yeah. are fighting over it. You know, that's exactly kind of my connection to Toys R Us. I'm like, that sounds like a scary place. I don't want to go in there. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good idea. I mean, it just it doesn't work anymore. I'll get my Lego brand building blocks someplace else. God, can you imagine how much 
how how much less fun it would have been collecting Star Wars action figures in the late seventies if you could just go online and buy them at Amazon. It would have been a completely different deal. Yeah. Yeah. It wouldn't be like, you know, I finally found a Boba Fett. Yeah. I went to Target when we were on vacation and I found this one figure tucked in the back. Yeah. Yeah. That was that was the fun is you go to the store, you never knew what you'd find. You know, or trying to convince my mom to keep buying stormtroopers. She's like, You already have a stormtrooper. I'm like, Yeah, but they never act alone. You have to Do have you know how many stormtroopers I need to get this pulled off here, Mom? It's like I need None at least None of them can two. shoot. I have to they have to swarm the enemy because they can't shoot. <laughs> I I need at least twelve. She's like, you can have at least you can have at most two, just in case one breaks. So it's like break a stormtrooper? First accident. <laughs> yeah, I broke him. Well, where is he? I don't know. I lost him too. So uh if you ever wanted to know what happened to Linda, she's done pretty well. Her current advertising agency, the Kaplan Thaler Group, are the masterminds behind the Aflac Duck. So there you go. Oh my gosh, you gotta be kidding. Okay, Brad, it's your turn. See if you can beat that earworm. I cannot, but I can give you something more delicious. One, two, one, two, three, four. Give me a break. Give me a break. Break me off a piece of that Give me a break. Give me a break. Break me off a piece of that Cat Bar. You can keep it to yourself, but it wouldn't be fair. Because that chocolate crispy taste is loved everywhere. So give me a break. Give me a break. Mmm, Kit Kat. Who would I, eat a Kit Kat bar right now? Hands up. Um, <laughs> I don't like them. Oh, okay, good. More for me. <laughs> I liked Whatchamacallit's and I liked Rolos. Oh, yeah. And Oh, and Twix. Oh, God. Twix. Something better than Twix. Twix. Peanut M&M's? <laughs> oh, yeah. Peanut oh. M&M's for sure. Yeah. Snicker bars. I was like... I like uh, texture. So I want some texture in my candy bars. <laughs> I understand the story for this one goes way back. Uh, um, yeah. I was doing some research and I saw that it goes all the way back to the 18th century when mutton pies in England were called Kit Kats. Why, we do not know. But, mm, meow. Uh, <laughs> I guess the origins of what we now know as the Kit Kat brand go back to 1911 when a um, candy company based in York, not New York, just York. Regular old York. Yeah, trademarked the terms Kit Kat and Kit Kat, one with a C, one with a K. Hmm. The version that we hear now, the Give Me a Break, which is still in use today, came about 1986. It was the DDB advertising agency. Everyone write that down. Another trivia <laughs> question that will get us murdered. Because we went to the trouble of finding out. Yeah. Can you imagine if we did that <gasps> on the cruise? Oh Name the ad agency responsible for the Kit Kat commercials. People would just be like, they would, they would know, literally, they would just leave. They would just get up and they, walk out. They would flip the paper in the air they, and walk they, out. They would flip the table, give us the bird, <laughs> and walk out. Maybe if they yeah. had a drink, they'd throw it in our face. <laughs> It'd be good theater. You well, have drinks, to admit. Are, drinks are free on the eighties cruise. So yeah, yeah, so there's no downside. Just have to wait in yeah, line again. Just. We don't get them for free because we're talent. But Well, that's what they tell us. If you're going to dump them on us, at least wait for us to open our mouths so we can, you know, enjoy a, a free one. On the... mm, delicious. <laughs> anyway, um, over the years, versions of this have been recorded by uh, Carrie Underwood, Sean Colvin, whoever the hell that is. I'm so, I'm so, <sighs> I'm so hopelessly out of touch with modern music. But anyone who's anybody's ever has recorded uh they give me a break jingle, and that's just fine by me. Mmm. Now I want some candy. Give me some sugar, Spearsy. Give me some sugar, baby. Okay, we got one last one to go. Anyone want to bet on what it's going to be? Because, frankly, we could use the money. <laughs> <laughs> You're wrong. Pay me $5. Uh, nope, here it is. Good days start with great mornings. The day's looking new and bright. And you're gonna start it right Fold your starting to brew The aroma's calling you The best part of waking up Is Folgers in your cup Nothing brightens your morning like mountain-grown Folgers Because mountain-grown coffee has more enticing aroma And richer flavor than any other kind That rich aromatic blend Is your best morning friend Starts you out feeling good 
Coffee. Coffee. Coffee, what? no! Everyone likes coffee, right? If you don't, I don't know why we're talking. Folgers has been around for over 150 years, but that jingle wasn't created until 1984. Wow. Yeah. The best part of waking up as Folgers in your cup has been featured in almost every Folgers ad since then. Uh, the lyrics were written by Susan Spiegel Solovey. That's a triple alliteration nice job mr and mrs spiegel solovey and bill vernick and the music is by leslie pearl i think i've heard never ending versions of this one i think i remember bonnie tyler did one i remember aretha franklin did one yeah and what i always think is interesting about this one is the commercial could be about everything else in the world but they they find but at least they squeeze it in at the very end yeah it's like that little tagline jingle um I yeah think paul stanley did a cover of it or did a version that's of it so cover. weird yeah i mean i'm sure paul drinks coffee after a long night of rocking and rolling all night you know so he can party every day a little coffee that makes sense i read this bizarre factoid and i don't know if it's true or not because sometime on the internet uh you, you are somewhat misled Abigail Folger was an heiress to the to the Folger fortune. I try saying that, but she was also a friend of uh, actress Sharon Tate. So you can see where this one's going. Oh no! And so yes, she was one of the five victims murdered. Um, oh my gosh! In 1969, by the tr- the Manson family. That's that's chilling. Yeah, even more chilling though, because <laughs> I was sitting here thinking about. There's so many interesting – like coffee loves to tell a story with their commercials. Sure, because they want to be like, look at this beautiful lifestyle you'll have if only you drink our brand of coffee. That's funny. And Steve I, never records a second podcast at home. I don't know if I've even had Folgers, to be honest. I thought it was an instant coffee, but I'm thinking of something else. This just makes me sound like such a coffee snob, but I was sitting here thinking, can you even buy coffee in a can anymore? I don't even know. Sure. Like coffee cans is what – all our grandparents and parents kept everything in in the garage, right? Oh, all the nuts go in that one and the bolts go in this one. Yeah, yeah. But I, I buy my coffee in these foil bags and then I grind it and then I make coffee out of it and then I drink it and my children say, oh my God, I can't believe you're drinking that. It's so dark and bitter. I'm like, yeah, just like your father. He's more machine now than man. Twisted and evil. I make coffee with the K-cup machine. Okay. It's weird. Because of work, I sometimes get to review um, items, you know, that people sure. would buy on Amazon. And there's this one coffee company that continues to send me like mad, huge boxes of K cup machines for like every kind of flavored coffee there is Cuban coffee, double oh caffeinated, half caffeinated, um, tea. In fact, when, when I'm hopped up on tea, it's thanks to uh, a company uh-huh. I will not name. Who are you? Dr. Michael Havar. Dr. Havar. Interesting. Well, that's uh, but, you know, that's not all bad. No, I know, but I feel bad because I know that using K cups is like not the most irres- you know, not the most responsible. Uh, yeah, they're pretty unrecyclable, which is a very unpopular position here at the Williams household. But yeah, know. I know. I, I I don't mean that in a bad way. I mean that in a good way. I just no, I know. For, I know. When when faced with a mountain of K cups, one tends to drink them and just it's, thanks yeah. oneself because they were why. there. <laughs> I don't know why I'm referring to everything in the third person. Anyway, the point being that um, I don't know if you remember, but back in 2009, Folgers had a holiday campaign called Coming Home, where. Uh, Long, long forgotten brother Peter shows up at his parents' home after returning from a stint as a volunteer in West Africa, and his mm. sister answers the door, and the two of them make like googly eyes at each other for a good few minutes. <laughs> Here's how it sounds. I must have the wrong house. Sister. <laughs> oh, I missed you so much. They waited up all night for you, you know. It's a long way from West Africa. Oh, real coffee. Kiss here. I brought you something from far away. <laughs> really? Oh. <laughs> what are you doing? You're my present this year. The best part of waking. Folders in your cup. 
the ad, I guess, was was uh, scrutinized for implying sexual tensions between Peter and his sister. I'm sorry about my brother. I know he's insensitive. He's had a hard life. Dad used to beat him up. Good. You know, <clears throat> I mean, I watched it, and I, I don't know. I, maybe there's something there, but you know, if somebody on, people, wants if they're to... looking. If you're looking for smut, you're going to find it. It's just, it's just, a, it's a silly commercial, and it, it, it is. It does, it does add new meaning to the best part of waking up. But that's you know, uh, neither here nor there. Super classic. Anyway, you know what else is neither here nor there? The, the seggies. Ah, the sound of listener mailbag. We got a letter this week from our old friend and and former co-host Chase Squires, who now lives in Ecuador. Hmm. Brad, why don't you read it? Apparently, they have the internet in Ecuador, which is a good thing. And cake ups. Those things are everywhere. Chase writes, "Hey guys, I look back at growing up in the '80s, and man, so much of my life and the world today is stuff we never saw coming in the '80s. Think about it." The idea of carrying a phone around, never mind that it's not just a phone, it's magically connected to all the information and entertainment in the world at all times. The internet? I was trying to write programming loops that spelled out dirty words on a TRS-80 as I tried to pass my comp sci class using BASIC. Now I'm sending you a note from my office in Ecuador. Streaming TV? Ordering anything you want brought to your home by looking at a screen? Music. I would sit by the radio for hours with my finger on the record button. Now I can download virtually any song instantly from the Russians for pennies or tell Alexa to play something. Fax machines were magic, but they used that funky rolled up paper. I had a Rand McNally map book in my car for my rides from Massachusetts to South Carolina for school. And newspapers were a part of daily life. Even Harrison Ford's reading a paper in the, quote, future, unquote, at the opening scene of Blade Runner, set in 2019, now in the past. Ugh. 18-year-old me in 1984 never saw any of this shit coming. Facebook? Taking videos of your phone of everything that ever happens? Holy hell, we never even imagined how our lives would be three decades after the greatest decade ended. If you go back 30 years prior to the 50s, things weren't that different. Hell, as the 80s began, my town didn't even have cable. Now I'm watching March Madness on a laptop as I type. So... If I'm allowed to transition from one seggy to another, I've spoken like a true former host, Chase Squire. Please, please tell me now. Please, please tell me now. Did everything turn out like we expected? Huh. That's an interesting question. Brad? I, I'm terrible at predicting. I can predict generally what I'm going to have for lunch, but I'm not very good at predicting past that. I just I don't. It's not some way my brain works. I will say I saw email coming just because in the 80s I was using email with my other super nerd friends at other campuses. But it was like this, was just to form the address, it wasn't just like steve at college dot school. It was, you know, some long series of numbers to get to the gateway and some long number of series to get to the next gateway. And then maybe an account number that was another six or eight digits. So it was like not super intuitive, but I did see that coming. A computer carrying around that in my pocket that did everything I needed and could give me directions and order me pizzas. That I did not see coming. I'm trying to think what turned out as we expected. I did expect newspapers and print, you know, magazines to, to die off. Print is dead. I, I just didn't expect it to be so quickly and so dramatically. <clears throat> Even my mom, who's who's ancient, as we now know. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get to that later. And not listening to this week's podcast. Even she canceled her print newspaper subscription wow um, but but she's hung up on the idea that she she needs a print tv schedule which only the newspaper provides and tv guide magazine which i've offered to buy her but she refuses to let me does TV, uh, is tv guide magazine even available anymore i think so because i said you know how about i just buy you a, t- a subscription to tv guide she's like no no, don't you dare. So it's like, okay, okay. Wow. I'll take that as a I'll take that as a maybe. So that's I'll take that under advisement. Yeah. Got it. And I'm like, well, you know, te- television has an on-screen entertainment guide. I can't use it. I'm like, okay, okay. Yeah. Anyway, wow. I, Crazy. So I, I didn't I didn't I saw that coming but not quite so severe and I I don't think anybody could have seen the um streaming TV and the 
now the impending death of cable TV. Yeah. I, I, I mean, keep trying to prepare her for that too. I'm like, you know, cable TV is a real huge waste of money and you could do a lot better if you just – that just, you know, sets off seismic tremors. Yeah. <laughs> she gets it. She gets cable for free in her retirement community oh, in, in well, her, her condo. So it's like for her, it's like the idea just, that yeah, cable that might die. Go is, away. Yeah, she just doesn't want to uh, talk about that. That's that's not to be. That's not a topic to be entertained. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I didn't see that coming really either. And I work in broadcasting, so I just was not paying attention. I, I think I've told the story on the podcast of the like the most insensitive thing I've ever said in a business meeting. When we were just rolling out Disney Channel content on um, in the iTunes Store, and someone asked if we should be sending captioned versions of these programs to Apple for them to prep, and I I said in the meeting with complete seriousness, I said, "What do you want captions for? For all the deaf people with iPods?" Ooh, I mean, at the time, I mean that was a that was a point directed at the market as it was, right? Not yeah. the market where it was going. We've all stepped in our dick at one point or another. So that was just your turn. Uh, you know. <laughs> anyway, if you ever want to ask us a question, send us an email to podcast at SITs.com. Just remember to put PPTMN in the subject line. Oh, yeah. Prepare to qualify. Hey, it's time for Stuck in the Arcade, our newest uh, segi. I, I think it's pretty popular. I, I like it. <laughs> I enjoy it, but Brad you know, likes it. Party two. So after the tremendously easy first installment, Brad decided to yank everyone's chain by making this week's ridiculously hard. Anyway, pay attention. Here was the uh, mysterious arcade sound. That's Paperboy. Oh boy, how insensitive me to like trash. The whole industry just moments ago. <laughs> well, I mean, I, I was a paper boy, so. Yeah. I don't think well, I, I ever played too. this game, though. I was, too. I used to bag. Remember, I used to bag the newspapers as we you drove around. A, and, and, you, you weren't a paper boy. You bagged papers. You didn't deliver oh. papers on a bicycle. Come on, man. I, I was on my bike. Do. Riding around in the neighborhood, throwing the papers. Choo, choo, choo. Only in Oklahoma, my friend. Yeah, uh, that's probably <laughs> true. Only a few winners this time. Go ahead and read them. Winners this week include Tom Corn in Austria, Dave in an undisclosed location, Alejandro Sticks Cardoso Solis from Tijuana, Mexico, Dallas in St. Joe, Missouri, and Chris B. Critter. Oh, nice. Yeah. I love how Missouri and Missouri are practically the same word. I've never been there, but I'm just going to assume that that's you know, fact check true. You've never been to Missouri? No, I don't think so. I've been to St. Louis. What's it like? Have you been there? Uh, yeah, it's it's the Midwest. I mean, I'm trying to think. I I've been to Kansas City, but I think the Kansas City part I've been in is mostly Kansas. But but when you say it's the Midwest, and I've been to I've been to St. Louis as a kid. When when you say it's Midwest, though, is it like Ohio Midwest or or Indiana Midwest or? Uh, yeah, it's more of that than like Wyoming. I mean, it's, it's well, flat. Wyoming's not in the Midwest. No, it's not. It's the West. But I mean, it's it's flat. It's green. There are trees. The cities are a little more sprawled out than they are in, like, say, San Francisco, New York, where you're geographically constrained. You have to go up. So they tend to spread out more than up. They're just they're Midwest cities. You know what freaks me about New York? And um, you know, I'm here for two weeks, and this happens every time. We're I'm up, we're in the we're on the twelfth floor, you know, yep. of of this building. And I swear, it's like you hear everything as if you're on the ground floor. <laughs> like you can hear like dogs bark, cats meow, you yeah. know, somebody wants to drop an F bomb. You can hear everything twelve stories up. That's crazy. How high up do you have to be to not hear <laughs> New York? That's my question, I guess. But pretty far, I would suppose. I mean, it's gonna bounce off all that concrete all the way up to your window. It's fun. No, it it is fun. Ex except for the days when they're working on, with jackhammers on the facade outside my window. It's it's fun. It's <laughs> <laughs> oh my anyway, gosh! Anyway, I'm, I'm all over the place today. I'm telling. I did have green tea earlier. It was iced, probably not as potent as the last time, or maybe my body's just kind of gotten used to it now. I don't know. 
I had a salad for dinner. That might be screwing with me Ooh, right now. <laughs> look at you. So healthy. Salad, no soda. Only wine on weekdays. So I had salad for lunch yesterday. I had two leftover pieces of pizza, and I heated them up, and I threw a handful of uh, arugula on top. So I called I that like a arugula. pizza it's salad. I love arugula. It's a I never vegetable. I would. It's a vegetable. <laughs> That's why I like it so much. My blue heaven. Anyway, spin the wheel. Let's find out who's a winner. It's peppery. I like peppery. Okay, here we go. Not too many names, so the wheel's nice and light, so I can give it a little, just a little, little tap here. Oh, nicely done. I'm still. I'm thinking that the the earworm that's still with me the most is the best part of waking up. I, I can't get it out of my head now. So, Steve's cake up in your head. Anyway, the winner is, it's going to be Dave in an undisclosed location, which is going to make it hard for us to send you anything. <laughs> but uh, we'll give it a shot. Dave, send us your postal address if you're, if, if you're okay with that, and we will send you a, Brad? Postal-friendly bottle opener. Oh, that was nice. I liked the way you did that. Well, I just sent out a mass of them today to uh, trivia winners from our virtual trivia session. Oh, good. Yeah. That was fun. Yeah, we did the virtual trivia a couple of weeks ago, and if you go to our f- official Stuck in the 80s YouTube channel now, you can you can watch it as, as if that would be a good use of your time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm having sorry. trouble sleeping? I, I am having trouble sleeping, so. You should watch that um, trivia recording. I'm going to watch the trivia, and I'm going to take – I'm going to chase it with a couple Unisom and see where we go. Uh, in the meantime, here's this week's Mystery Arcade Sound. If you know it, email us at podcast at SITs.com. Looking for that Folgers transition here. It's just not going to happen. Just mail us and find out if you're a winner. We'll be right back after this commercial break. Captain America here. I need your help battling the energy wasters, the thermal thief, the wattage waster, and the cold air crook. These insidious villains are probably in your home. Defeat the thermal thief by shutting doors. Waste the wattage waster by turning off unused lights. And cool the cold air crook by shutting the refrigerator door. Saving energy is everyone's business, so keep it up, America. And we're back. We've got a few minutes left. Can I extend apologies once again for calling my mom ancient? She's, I'm ancient. She's well-seasoned. She's experienced. Experienced. Uh, I'm ancient. Yeah. So on the other side of the coin, my mother, dear sweet woman that she is, recently signed me up for an AARP membership. What? I'm like, are you kidding me? She's like, oh, yes, you know, I, I realized you turned 50 and I meant to sign you up then. I'm like, mom. What? I'm not retired. I'm not anywhere near retired. I, you know, I'd love to be retired, but I think I need a little yeah. more cash to maintain my opulent lifestyle. My opulent podcaster lifestyle <laughs> needs funds to support. Yeah. I'm like, really, mom? Really? <laughs> She's like, oh, the discounts are great. I'm like, are they that great? And now I'm not kidding you. If you're members, like, let me just warn you. My mailbox is overloaded with stuff. Almost every day, it seems like I get some special offer from the AARP. I'm like, this is just like, it's a junk mail empire. Yeah. Well, I'll say this one thing to loop all the way back to the beginning. You know, uh, when I say, you know, I I can see print dying. One thing that'll never die, the AARP magazine. That sucker's here to stay. Yeah. Yeah, that and AAA, the AAA magazine, same way. Exactly. Exactly. Anyway, if you have an idea for a commercial for us to feature in a future show, please email us. We're going to I think what we're going to try to do is group them into categories or or maybe we'll continue with earworms. Only future Brad and future Steve know the answers to these questions. They are not right talking. there. Yeah. <laughs> but in the meantime, we all four of us remain here hopelessly stuck in the eighties. Hey, wait a minute. My TV doesn't work. Hey, Rogan! What are we gonna do? Like this isn't fair! Stuck in the 80s is now on Patreon. If you'd like to support the show, go to patreon.com slash stuck in the 80s podcast. Special thanks to Check Battery Daily for our theme music, and thanks for listening. Hey!